Hey guys, Drake here with The Nectar Bar, and today I wanted to give you something that you could do to kind of help the bees and butterflies um, get their water source. Now, a good thing to know is that, one, you need some type of vessel. Um, so here I have a little leaf-shaped kind of a bird bath that I'm using. Um, you could also just use something as simple as an old saucer um, from under a plate or under a pot. Um, or a little dish that's kind of like this um, that has no holes in it that would hold water. Um, but the thing that you want to do is make sure that the bees or the butterflies can't drown. So you would definitely want to fill them with rocks first and then add your water. Um, also a good thing to know is that once you do this, this is going to be something that you will leave in its space and it won't move because they need to know that this is a resource for them that they can go to and it's always gonna be there. Um, simil similar kind of mimicking nature a little bit, um, although sometimes things can then do dry up, but we wanna help them out. So um, today we're gonna teach you how to make one. And first here, mine is a little bit deeper. It's not too deep, um, maybe about an inch and a half or so deep, but I'm gonna take some of these rocks here. Um, these rocks here are just a little bit of gravel um, and it's just gonna kind of fill the space up um, one so that the, they don't drown but two also so that mosquitoes don't breed so that's a very very important thing I'm just gonna lay that in there and then I'm just gonna kind of even it out and then once I have it kind of evened out I'm gonna take what I have here which are some prettier rocks. Um, and I'm just gonna lay them on the top um, just to kind of give it a more pretty look. You can use any type of rock that you would want. Um, oh, hello, Mr. Spider. I didn't mean to disrupt your home. Let's put you over here. Yes, I think there you go. <laughs> Gotta give him his home back. Um, so I'm just gonna take this and dump that in there. And, and once I kind of have the rocks where I want them. No special thing, it's exactly how you want to do it. Um, nothing fancy, it doesn't have to be. Um, but then my next thing I have here is rainwater. Now you don't have to use rainwater. You can definitely use any type of water, even from the tap. If you're going to use tap water, I would suggest that you allow it to sit overnight or maybe even a two or three days just so that all the chlorine kind of gets out of there um, and let it evaporate out so that we're not giving chemicals to our bees and butterflies but it's strictly up to you and what you want to do I prefer to use some rainwater now I'm just going to go ahead and dump it in and now I can see that all along here now the water is starting to kind of collect and I want to place some rocks around this end of it so that no one accidentally drowns. I want to make sure every kind of little nook and cranny where there's too much space is completely filled so that no one accidentally drowns so here I think I have done it I don't think I'm gonna put any more water in here because um, this will flood out a little bit more um, and I think it's pretty much done now let me see if I can give you a closer look as you can see here there's a little bit of puddles but not too deep and every little rock is close by enough that if one were to kind of fall, you know what, let me put, I wanna put that one right there. Yes, cause I wanna make sure that there's plenty of spaces um, for them to get their water, but I don't want anyone to drown. So this here is a good, good source for bees and it will kind of stay in its place. Um, I won't have to ever move this. And this is gonna be my little tea garden here. Um, I on the last video I have this here um, as I was prepping and and doing things so 
um, this will stay here. It won't move and it'll be a great source for bees and butterflies um, and other little bugs that will need to come and get some water. So until next time, peace, love, and butterflies.